Hi again, everybody. Craig Miner V. Welcome to RHI Rewind. A look back at the 1994 Roller Hockey International season. We've got a good one for you on the program. The Vancouver Voodoo, a hot team. They've won five straight in first place in the Northwest Division against the San Jose Rhinos, battling for their playoff lives as the season winds down now. They are in third place. Jim Fox joining me. Jim, you look at Vancouver, a tough team, headed by a tough guy, Tiger Williams, the GM and head coach. You know when you bring up the name Tiger Williams, it means hard-hitting, physical <laughs> hockey. Tiger Williams has surrounded himself with big players. They love to go out and finish the checks very hard. You look at San Jose, a good scoring team led by Mark Wolf and Darren Colburn, two of the real snipers in the RHI. It's a great one-two combination for San Jose. In Mark Wolf, they have a man who finishes off the play with a good shot, but he does a lot of other things good offensively, moving the puck around. Darren Colburn, he's a pure sniper all the way. He loves to set up on his off wing, gets the one-timer on that. A classic confrontation then. you got the tough Vancouver team and the scoring San Jose team. Let's go out to the San Jose Arena in California for the action. A crowd of over 6,000 fans on hand for this RHI matchup between Vancouver and San Jose. Here's the voodoo lineup in the net is Ken Kinney at defense, Lori Billick and Kevin Hoffman, and up front, Mike Kennedy and George Zajankola. There's the voodoo goalie, Ken Kinney. He's a fireman when he doesn't play roller hockey. A record of seven victories, three defeats. Goals against average of 6.21. In the net for the Rhinos is John Gustafson. On the back line, Alan Schuler and Darren Weatherill. And up front, Mark Wolf and Jay Murphy. John Gustafson between the pipes for the Rhinos. He's 25 years of age from Fort Francis, Ontario, a record of 4-2, and, and a goals against average of 8.49. As San Jose coach Roy Sommer watches this high-sticking penalty to Shea Esselmont, puts San Jose on the power play early in the first quarter, where we join the action. And you remember, automatic game is caught up for fighting. Does that go for announcers too, Jim, or just the guys on the surface? I think it's just the guys down there. And I'll hey. be down there later. Watch that right hand. Get the ref to get you out of here. It's only going to take one. <laughs> oh, nasty! Go. Alan Schuler coming up across the line. Him changing his reputation, I guess. So. Let's go! Oh, good play! Nice shot after the Schuler pass, which is nothing new. It was Wolf that scored it, and the Rhinos are getting rowdy here as well. They get on the board first. Wolf with 43 points now over his last 12 games, and we're only a little bit into this one. Alan Schuler's goal that banked off defenseman Rob Dumas gave San Jose a two-goal lead with just over five minutes to go in the first quarter. Dennis Purdy then took this boarding penalty. That gave Vancouver a four-on-two power play advantage for 15 seconds. We come back to the action with seven seconds left in the two-man power play. Four-on-two here for another seven seconds for Vancouver. Big chance, Dumas over to Harrison, shot at the side of the net. Two seconds to go, it's gonna be a four-on-three right now. But still not yet until he gets into the play. Harrison's pass goes through the legs of Hertzak, a newcomer from Sacramento. Good goal scorer. Vancouver keeping it in. That's Hertzak. Nice job. Harrison in front. He goes to him, shoots, and went off the leg. And it was Weatherill again. Great job by Weatherill on the power play here. 115 on the penalty. Dumas with a blast. He scores. That was a cannonball by Rob Dumas. Craig, I hate to overanalyze, but I'm going to go back to about 20 seconds ago when the Rhinos had total possession, killing a penalty, especially in roller hockey, get that puck all the way down the floor. Because of the power play situations, the penalty killers take a beating, and they're tired out there, so you have to clear it. Watch the screen develop right there. The screen by the Voodoo was set up perfectly. You're right, Jim, so with 150 to go now, how discouraging it would have been if San Jose could have killed off that penalty. Instead, the Voodoo are now within one. Here comes McKinnis in. McKinnis with a slapper, blocked. How would you like to be the brother, the younger brother, of the guy who has the hardest shot in the NHL? Yes, the younger brother has to play goal sometimes. We'll tell you about that later. Good shot for Harrison. They put the light on, but I believe it cranked off the post. Now they whistle again as Wolf 
came up with it. We'll have to get a look at that. Ref waved it off. Looked like he was in good position as well. And it sounded like it hit the post all the way. When the light goes on, the referees usually decide to blow it down. We're going to try and take a look and a listen at this regular speed. The voodoo up the eye, up the floor. The shot off the post. You could hear that ring. Gustafson looked behind himself. Now they're discussing it over by the timekeeper's bench. Harrison wants the call, but the ring tells you it went right off the post. Goal judge, it was too quick for him. I think he overreacted. No videotape replay here in the RHI, not yet anyway. NHL did not do that in year number two, did they? Well, they, they figured that out, and it certainly helps. See it right there? It's double pepperoni, extra cheese, <laughs> maybe a few green peppers. No, oh, they're, they're, not, they're not calling the game. They hey. don't care about that shot off the post. They want to get the post game. We'll take another look. Oh, wait Let a minute. Yeah, well, that's, I think the angle there is to say it went uh, off the far uh, post. Boy, I don't know. I'm betting everything I own. Yeah? I everything. Th I think it hits the back of the net. I think it hits the post. Obviously, the referees always get it right. Referees are always correct. I, I don't know about that, but we'll see. And they're going to call it a goal, I think. And you're right, Craig. Whoa! I, you own everything I have. You own it all. <laughs> That's great. I get a 68, uh, what is that car? Let's see if you can pick it up from this angle. I mean, I'm reacting on, it just goes out of the screen as we get down low. I'm only reacting because it bounces out so quick. Now there's a foamy substance at the bottom of the net. Usually what that does is cushion a shot. That post rang right out there, the shot. I'm still, well, I guess I'm not betting anymore because I've lost everything, but. You have nothing to bet. Mike Kennedy put the pass on the backhand and shoveled it past John Gustafson to give the Voodoo their first lead of the game. We return to the action two minutes into the period. Let's go down to Jim Fox now on the Voodoo bench. Jim? Thanks very much, Craig. I'm down here on the bench. Tiger, it looked a little bit to me like the Rhino came out hitting, but now your team is back playing this game. Well, we're back into it. You know, we don't play much on sports, but it uh, takes a few shifts for everybody to get the hang of it. But we're rolling now, and uh, it's a good game. It's, 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 everybody's playing hard, both teams. So Looks like hit for hit, pretty good. Well, that, that's the way you want in this game. you got to play the body. You let the guy loose, and he'll burn you. All right, thanks, Tiger. 10.26 to go, second quarter. The Tiger loving things in the RHI. And you can tell about his competitive spirit. He's a, he's a hard-nosed coach. And as the players will tell you, you got to respect him. And he gets the most out of him, no doubt about that. Here's McInnes now, has NHL ties. His brother used to fire slap shots. Adam in front, the chance, McMillan save, rebound, score! Danny Purdy has tied it up for San Jose. And the Rhinos are going wild here. 3-3 from San Jose Arena. Pretty smart move in there by Dennis Purdy. He waited. He's driving to the net. Great look right here. Now watch Purdy off to the right side. He's gauging the situation and his perfect timing there for the rebound. Now Purdy is out of control here. Watch the rebound. He has a wide open net. If 19 Purdy decides, okay, I'm just going to drive to the net. Well, then he goes right by the play, especially on the rollers. Two weeks ago in the regular season, the top four teams in each division will make the playoffs 16 in all. There'll be a two-plus game format in the playoffs. A game at your building, a game at the other building. And then if it's tied after two games, they'll play a 12-minute period to decide the series. And that format will stick throughout the playoffs. Behind the net, Murphy missing his check on Cote. Now Murphy again, he's got Wolf free. And Mark comes over to play at number eight. Nifty move, but Dumas helps him down. Nice defensive play by Rob Dumas. Weatherill throws the body. Murphy is over there. Weatherill has Wolf alone in front. Wolf coming into the backhand, and he scores! What a move by Mark Wolf. Did he have Kenny at his mercy or what? Rhinos on top again. Wolf knows exactly what to do. The first goal he scored, just a powerful shot this time. He snuck in behind everyone. Once again, Craig, there was commotion on the boards near the center zone. You see right there the long pass in roller hockey. Remember, the offside rule is so liberal here. And Wolf faked the shot, went to the backhand. 
But that long pass, it doesn't take too long for things to develop. Darren Coburn's block it from the top of the left circle that beat Kent Kinney. Regained San Jose's two-goal lead three and a half minutes into the second quarter. Kinney was then pulled in favor of backup Del Mason. And just four minutes later, Mike Kennedy scored in this passing play with three of the Rhino players behind the goal line. But the Spirits were not on the Voodoo side. With 1.10 to go in the half, Chris Boy's shot from the top of the left circle deflected off defender Jason Jennings' skate and over Mason's shoulder to give San Jose a two-goal edge going to halftime. And welcome back to the Rewind Studios. You know the city of San Jose has recently become a hockey hotbed and that enthusiasm has continued this summer with the play of the RHI Rhinos. But one thing Northern California has always been known as is being a surfer's paradise. And that works out just great for two of the Rhinos, Alan Schuler and John Gustafson. Uh, Free line in Santa Cruz, California. It's where we get our surf stuff. Uh -oh. yeah. hey. So, what's the surf like today? Right now, it's pretty good. Um, it's, it's about four to five feet, you know. South swell. Too big um, for us. Well, go, you can find a mellower spot. Lots of wax. Alright, this is Manresa, is that right? Yeah, Man Manresa Beach. You can see there's nobody here, so we can't get in anybody's way. Two Canadian kids surf. I haven't surfed all that much, but four or five times. Pretty good looking outfits, eh? Uh, I got caught in a really big wave one time and I just got up one of my first times I've ever gotten up and I was coming down the wave and there was this guy sitting at the bottom of the wave on a surfboard obviously a local and he's looking at me like you know I had two heads that you know get out of my way and I dove out of the way but my surfboard actually jumped out of the water and hit him in the chest. I got involved in surfing uh, actually through my uh, roommate Al. I'm waxing the board, it's kind of like uh, sharpening your skates, I guess, or taping your stick. Uh, it seems kind of useless, but if you don't do it, you can't stand up. It's much, much too slippery, and I need all the help I can get. Surfing's actually provided a lot of a lot of great times, and I'm kind of a water baby from from my childhood, and, and surfing is something that I'd always thought I'd like to try. It's exhilarating when you get up on a wave for the first time and you get going. It's, and it, it's quite fast. They say uh, around here in Santa Cruz that this is the world's biggest breeding ground for great whites. This whole shark business or no shark business is kind of interesting. Probably my most interesting surfing experience was uh, the first time those dolphins came out of the water. Because you know, you, you're supposed to know that they're dolphins, but you see one fin and you're not sure. I feel much more safe in the gold crease than out there. Uh, you won't be seeing me trading my blades for uh, one of those surfboards at any time. You've seen how I can surf, you know, I know damn good. We come back to the action one minute into the second quarter with the score still 6-4 San Jose. Dumas knocked down. 10-23 to go, third quarter. Penalty just expiring. Hurtzak shoots, he scores on a screen. Zajankala came in front. Gustafson obviously arguing that Zajankala may have disturbed him somehow or brushed him. But I don't think they're going to call that, and it's now 6-5. That was not a power play goal. The penalty had just ended, but it doesn't matter to Rob Herzak. He was acquired from the Sacramento River Rats. Comes inside. Nice move right there, and this unloads. Well, if there was any contact, I think it came after the puck had already been gone 
past the goaltender. Oh, there is no contact right there. Perhaps, if anything, stick on stick. The San Jose fans enjoying an exciting evening of roller hockey. Well, they haven't seen their Rhinos lead by more than two goals. Darren Coburn's second goal of the game on the power play opened up yet another two-goal lead for the home team. We go back to the action for the last two minutes of the third quarter. The Rhinos in the white. The Voodoo of Vancouver in the black uniform by two. Here's the Jankala. Lost control. Jane Murphy steals it for San Jose. And they dump it in. Nick Miller over there. He lost control. Now regains it. Across the surface has Foy. Trying to hold on to it. Cross. Quick shot. Stop. Oh, that was a good one by Mason. On the corner, McMillan behind it at the Colburn. Back to the point. McInnes. Across the surface. Foy. He shoots for a screen. Tip score. Tip it. I think Colburn got a piece of it. Number 25 will have to check the replay. And the Rhinos take a three-goal lead. Let's see if Colburn got a piece. Great shot by Foy. And the Rhino fans are going wild. Dave Tiger Williams not very happy. A three-goal deficit now. Let's see, though, if Colburn got the tip. Here's the shot by Fox. Tough to see at that angle. And Craig, you can't see it there, but you're exactly right. Colburn reaches out right there, and he picked that under the air. The puck was about waist high. Darren Colburn lost his wheels there. Let's see if Vancouver can continue their fine fourth quarter surge. Godowski with a shot, to the side. As you said, outscoring their opposition, the best in the league with 18 more goals in the fourth quarter. Thank you, partner. Make that 22 more goals in the fourth. Here's the Jankala one-on-one. -on -one. Can he beat his man? No. Well played by Chris Foy. The Rhinos defense has played excellent in this game. Good stand-up deep. Gustafson almost out of the net. Now but not to the point. Dumas dumps it in quickly, and Foy brings it right back out. Foy, soft touch to Colburn. They connected last time. Off the deflect. Now it's Kennedy. Up to Dumas. 10.32 to go. Here's Kennedy, has a chance for a shot. He shoots through a screen, it was blocked by that screen. Dumas lost his stick, he'll have to backpedal without a stick. A quick shot by Godowski. Stop, and it comes right back out. And here comes the Jankala two on two. He has Billick, the big defenseman goes toward the net. The Jankala waiting, dragging it on the back end, he scores! He snuck it in. I think he fooled Gustafson, who thought the pass was coming. And the goaltenders, as you know in this league, have to cheat toward the pass. Otherwise, they never cover the net. Zajankala, Jim, took advantage of that. He also took advantage, I think, of his reach right here. Six foot three. Couple of fake shots right there. He takes advantage. You're right. The goaltender has to hug that post until the shot comes. And you saw right there the goaltender just moved across. Neat little backhand by Zajankala. And he made it count. But I think he took advantage of all the traffic going to the net. His teammates driving hard, and it gave him that few extra seconds he needed to get the backhand on goal. Craig Menervini back with Jim Fox in the Rewind studio. And as you know, in the OHI game, only four skaters aside. You don't have a center left wing, right wing situation, so the coaches have big decisions. Not only who to put out, but where do you put your four skaters? Two basic sets in Roller Hockey International. You have the 2-2, two, two, two defensemen and two forwards. That's a more conservative style for roller hockey. Also, you have the 1-3, one, one defenseman on the floor along with three forwards. That provides more offense, the up-tempo game that I think we're used to with roller hockey. What about the other side? Three forwards, one defenseman. If you don't score, Jim, that puck's going back the other way and you're in trouble. Well, I think, first of all, you tailor your style to your team. If you have the offensive mindset from most of your players, you go with that one three. But also during a game, you may have to change back and forth. If you're trying to protect the lead, you go to the two two. And coaches know this is an offensive game. The idea is to score, 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 so they don't mind using three guys up front. Another thing to look for in an RHI game. Right now, let's get back to it. It's Vancouver and San Jose. Mark Wolf completed his hat trick on this play and gave San Jose their first three goal lead of the game. Wolf was able to get the puck behind Mason as he moved side to side in the crease. 
minute and 50 to go now. And another chance for the Voodoo who have had the empty net here for about a minute and 30 seconds. And the Rhinos have had three shots at the empty net and have not put it in. And thus, the Voodoo still have some life with a minute 39 to go. Brad Harrison coming in. Harrison is Zajankala, waiting, shooting, he missed the net. Minute 30 to go. Buck him go all the way around. Wolf is a good goal scorer. It'll be tough to miss here. Shoots, and there it is. He dents the twine with his fourth goal of the game. And the Rhinos just about putting it away now, leading by four, 10 to 6. It took quite a bit of time. But the Voodoo just could not get the puck past John Gustafson. There's the goaltender. He'll be heading back into the goal. Mark Wolf, well, he makes this one look easy because it was kind of easy. He has a two-on-one all the way. Well, the old na-na-na. Coming out here at the San Jose Arena, the puck just along the boards. Just a hard clear, you ring the puck along the boards. Look at Wolf, he was deciding there for a second. Pass, go pass. Sometimes you can be too unselfish. I think it's a good move by Wolf there, the big bad Wolf tonight. He has four goals. He is now fourth in the league in goals four with 29. Ryan Harrison is third with 30. Jerry St. Cyr from Portland leads with 32. Jason Krywalak, Calgary, 31. Quick shot stopped again by Gustafson. And now, oh, they banged it in somehow. As John thought he made the stop, it was on the rebound. And it may be credited to uh, Shea Esselman. We'll have to wait and see. 10-7 now, minute six to go. Crazier things have happened in the RHI. We'll see this play. The rebound will drop right to the feet of the goaltender. Right here, and there's the backhand. Shea Esselman does pick it out of the air, kind of bouncing puck. And the rebound was trying to be controlled. You saw one of the Rhinos players just skate right through it. He couldn't find the puck. And the goaltender for the Voodoo is coming to the bench again. So the Voodoo back within three. 15 seconds to go. Back to the point. That's Brad Harrison. He's bothered, throws it towards the net. Shot hit the post. Kumas hit the post with five seconds to go. Harrison behind the net. The goodbye song. And we'll say goodbye as well. We are back in our Rewind studio. A nice effort for the San Jose Rhinos. They make a push toward the playoffs with this big 10-7 win over Vancouver. I say, Big, it was a tough game. By far the hardest hitting game so far this season. You expect it with Vancouver. They have all the big players. San Jose, they came out and took the body themselves, finishing hard hits all night. I think it's apparent right now. The players in Roller Hockey International are used to the rollers. They've made adjustments coming over from ice onto the roller floor and they're finishing those checks up. Mm -hmm. Now when they line someone up, it's not a situation where they're not confident. They know they can line up and finish that check. News around the league, Minnesota Arctic Blast have won seven straight. They have the best record now in the RHI. And the LA Blades finally seizing first place in the Pacific Division with four straight victories. But the Rhinos still have a shot to catch them if they can win down the stretch. We'll see you next time on RHI Rewind. For Jim Fox, I'm Craig Benervini. So long, everybody.